It's time for episode number 158 of Main Event Moto. Joe, it is Sunday, like normal time. I mean, I think we would have been doing the show right around now anyway. So this feels 100% normal to me. Except for I drove here from home. Yeah, you didn't. Not from the airport. Right, from the airport. From a 3 a.m. wake up call Oof. to get here in time. Dude, I slept in. Had my coffee, nice, feet up. Nice. Enjoyed the kids on this Saturday morning or Sunday morning, sorry, and drove over here. And we're going to talk about, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Football? Nope. That's not running. <laughs> Anything else? Basketball? Nope. Damn. I got, actually, I have a point on that. I'm, I'll get to that at some point. I can. The Masters? Uh, nope. Hockey? The Lodi Supercross ran. Lodi Supercross. It ran just That's what fine. we're talking about. Um, That's what we're getting into. It was good. It was a good. I did. I, I, I ran the whole thing. I was the uh, promoter. Tough night. AMA. I was <laughs> um, checkered flagger. Ooh. I did TV. You were the pit board girl? Yep. I did that. I did the wiggle. <laughs> um, I did it all. Only one rider show up, uh, showed up. Ooh. One. Hey. <laughs> Guaranteed. Oh, guaranteed. Huge shout out, though, to Fly Racing, Mika Metals, No Toil, EMT Racing, Viral Moto, and All Me Creations. And of course, we got to give a huge shout out to motosport.com, All American Chevy of Clean, Screen Printing Done, Guts Racing, Scott USA, DRS Suspension with Race Tech, and of course, the Tigers of Law, my friends at Law Tigers. Uh, Snap on Dan is in the Bat Cave. Dan, how you feel? Oh, my What's gosh, up? the Bat Cave, Joe. The, we should probably not even say that. Isn't that didn't this all start from eating bats? <laughs> uh, I heard that. Is that true? Supposedly. I've heard that this started a hundred different ways. And that's why I don't even I don't even care. I don't listen anymore. I don't care. You know what this all actually th- this is doomsday for the American public because we have gone to a point now where we don't believe anything anyone says ever. Like think about it. If if the media, the president, um, a celebrity who if anyone says anything, half the people think they're full of it, no matter what. So right now, we are in a place where no one believes anything at all, at all. So I don't know. All I know is that we are in the bat cave. There are no bats in here. If there is one, though, Joe, probably shouldn't eat it, just in case. Yeah, maybe. I think we're good all here, right, Dan? You feel yeah. you actually almost died a couple weeks ago. Man, I'm not so sure that like a month ago that I don't even want to say that I had it or whatnot, but I felt like crap. Joe and did, I, too. You know, and... Hey, here I am. I'm alive. We're all going to be okay. Well, we're not all going to be okay, Dan. I don't know about all of us. Well. Anyways, no, we're going to, uh, well, I guess we'll talk about it from, um, I guess, just the standpoint of what we know now and where we're at now and maybe what kind of transpired over the last week. I can give you guys my week and we'll start there and kind of just look at the calendar and how this all played out. It's It's obviously crazy, right? I mean, are you guys... As shocked as I am, just not only for the sports sake, but just the world's sake, like where we are right now. We're we're on lockdown. My kids are out of school. They're locked down until April sixth. They're out. What I'm not. What I'm shocked with is it went from zero to a hundred in the matter of like forty eight. Uh, yeah, forty eight hours. Two it, three the days. The whole yeah. world fell apart in two days. And what bothers me the most is, man, what happens when something really bad happens in this in our country? You know, whether it's a a nuclear attack or, you know, whatever. Zombies. I mean, what happens if something actually <laughs> bad happens? I was gonna say, it's going to be crazy. Well, human beings are proving right now that we are not prepared for anything outside of normal. I, I mean, the, tr- the fact that the toilet paper thing is a legit thing. There literally is no toilet paper. I was at a business the other day making a delivery for Eagle Grit, and they were on the phone calling every supply company they could to find out if anyone had toilet paper. Like that's for real, and I and I don't yeah. I don't understand it all the way. I guess my thinking on that one is maybe the supply lines from China because those got kind of shut down. No, what it a is month ago. What maybe. it is is somebody went out and bought a shitload of toilet paper. But why? Why is that? Because we're followers. No, but why? Well, who did it first? I, I mean, my bigger concern is what's going in. Not what's coming out, because I feel like that could be handled in multiple ways, right, Joe? Yes, like exactly. there's other ways to handle that problem. <laughs> yeah, it's the I went to Walmart the other day, and there was no toilet paper, paper, paper towels, anything. 
There was so much food. The water was... St- well... There was a lot of water the first time I went that day. Let's just say I did doomsday a little. I did go back and grab some extra stuff, and the waters were gone when I went the second time. But as of, like, I guess Thursday, there was a lot of food and water, and there was no toilet paper. Explain to me why that was the first thing to be bought up. That's that's the last thing to happen in the process of survival. It's because everybody started posting about it on Facebook and seeing it on the Internet. So then everybody felt like that they had to be the ones to go out and get more toilet paper as well. It has nothing to do with anything else. Dude, I use a lot of toilet paper. I'm just that person, okay? <laughs> You're that guy. But right. I don't use that much toilet paper. So Yeah, Joe, what are we, what are we doing? Is it, is it the old wipe and fold? Use it twice? <laughs> like, what are we doing right now? What are, what are you doing? Are you, do you, are you stocked? <laughs> so I heard this thing on the radio that there is a, a new thing, right? Where you actually take a dump in the shower. Hmm. Like, that's a thing. And then do the old waffle stomp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, I feel like there's other ways to handle that in tough times. Um, the real tough times, though, is that the world's getting shut down, and that obviously is dominoes down the line. It's affecting everybody. I mean, I could tell you right now, straight up, I am dramatically affected by this. Um, I'll be up front. I make decent money from January to May. It's my good time of year. And normally what I do in that time of year is I live a little looser. We go out a little bit more. We Let's just say we're not staring at the bank account every day, but then we tighten up and usually I have some to get me through the rest of the I mean, that's, we have a, I have a year planned out based on what happens for four and a half months. Well, that four and a half months just got shook. And that's, that's just me. I go down the line of the, the employees that work at the stadium – the guy who works in the parking lots at the stadium, the the teams, the riders, their practice bike mechanics. I mean, everybody is affected by this. And you're right, Dan. It went from, man, this thing is kind of weird, to shut down overnight. And I think it's going to get worse, to be honest. I, 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 God, I, I, I'm hoping that there was an overreaction, and then all of a sudden, in a week or two, we go, oh, we're, we're in a better spot than we thought, and then it shifts back on. It, I hope the faucet turns on as quick as it turns off, but dude, I, did, I don't think anything in life goes that way. You know what I mean, Joe? You, you can tear something down in a second. Yeah. But re, like, we could literally burn this bat cave down probably, what, five minutes if we wanted to? Probably. It would take a long time to build it back up. Right. And that's why I'm nervous that this, as much as we want to speed things back up, it takes long to do that. And that's, I think that's natural progression i think come monday we're going to start hearing about some domestic travel bans as far as airfare and uh well the international stuff's going on i mean and then the cdc is recommending to the federal government that we shut down for 14 days like the whole world that's what they're doing in Italy. That's everyone what they in quarantine themselves so it doesn't spread that's exactly what i think is going to happen oh well, everyone else is doing it and, and i mean and that's literally what's happened right now with let's do what we do follow you know, but I, I don't know, Joe. What do you think? Are we are we overreacting and we're going to be fine, or did we underreact and we are all done for, or is it somewhere in the middle? I somewhere in the middle. I mean, I, I heard a podcast the other day where they literally came out and said, at a minimum, minimum, three hundred and fifty thousand people in the U.S. are going to die. <laughs> at a minimum, and this is like a credited doctor, scientist, biologist, and I'm thinking. If that is the minimum, then it's doomsday. That's a that they said that just in the U.S. in the U.S. and, and how long? Like a year? Um, over the course of six months through the summer, and then when w- they say it's going to thin out this virus through the summer, and then by fall it's going to hit again ten times harder because obviously there's different seasons of when the body can handle. I mean, even if you look at the numbers, the colder climates are handling this a lot worse than the warm climates. So they're saying that when fall hits and the time changes and the flu normally kicks off, this is going to rebound. Whatever we do to stop it now is going to be 10 times worse in September. And it's oh, like, wow. Yeah, and then that's a minimum. How many, how many deaths did you say? 350,000 350, in the uh, U.S. Geez, no, I think that's ridiculous. That's Okay, okay, okay then is it 2,000 and it's... Less than the Hillary Clinton body count? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. I saw that somewhere. Stop. I'm sorry, but if you're a meme maker... Business is good. Uh-huh. Like, you're still killing it. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Like, this is the best content you've had in a while. Um, but for the rest of us, I think, again, we're all 
we're somewhere in that line of dominoes and we're all going to get hit at different times. I mean, I, it's Sunday. I'm home. I'm, I'm getting hit hard this week alone. One week changes everything for me. Yeah, it's going to be weird for, for me. You know, as you guys all know, I'm a Snap-on dealer and I service, you know, a lot of shops and I have a lot. How, how they acting so far? Uh, last, not last week, but the week before, I was already having guys like just not showing up at work because they were afraid that they were going to get this virus. They just stopped showing up and, right. you know, we kind of all thought, well, those are just the lazy guys that just don't want to go to work anyways, right? Last week was actually a, a fairly good week. You know, and um, guys were around. Guys were around. You know, everybody wants to talk about it and stuff, but nobody was super weird. And then Friday hit, and that's kind of when you know people went out shopping and things. That's when Doomsday Doomsday hit Thursday Thursday afternoon Friday. And so now, like a lot of my dealerships, I do a lot of car dealerships, and they're talking about shutting. You know, not allowing outside vendors that are not essential into the shop. And my particular route has a very very high percentage of car dealerships so uh, more really than normal because i know your old yeah. route had more small shops now you have a lot of big ones yeah. where you have yeah okay so you know it could potentially i haven't made a decision on what i'm going to do yet um it, i'm going to let monday come and find out you know exactly what these dealerships are going to do because i have two big automotive groups so if one does it the other one's going to do it and then there goes all my dealerships um right well, so, again, they all follow, and one drops, the rest fall. I mean, the NBA, when it comes to what's happening in entertainment and sports, the NBA, Joe, is the first, right, to be pretty dramatically... I mean, they're the ones that turned everything, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, so, Dan, are you going to work, are you going to work Monday? Yeah, I'm going to go to work You're going to go and just see? Yeah, I'm going to go to work Monday, and, um, you know, I, I've done some stuff on my truck, done some additional cleaning. I mean, I keep my truck pretty clean anyways, yeah. but, um, you know, I'll do my part in what I think is, you know, necessary, necessary uh, to do, but I'm going to go to work as business as usual and, and try to be positive and not talk about this crap. Because honestly, when we stop talking about it and the that'll media, be the start the media stops reporting on it, things will go back to normal, you know, and in, in times like this, we need to be positive. Honestly. Joe, did you, did you see what I post on Instagram? That little clip of Dr. Drew? No. Dr. Drew is on something, I don't even know. And he's like, if you are in the medical field, the CDC, the World Health, you need to treat this so serious. And if you're the media, you need to shut up. Oh, wow. He, I mean, he was aggressive. And I posted it because I thought it was hilarious because it's the true. It's, we, we forget that the media isn't just like these guys that are all out there just doing their thing. It's a business. It's a biz, there's a business model behind it. The business model is draw um clicks draw down i mean for us we're somehow silly joe we're in the media <laughs> that's what we do and i'm assuming that this show will probably do better than anything we've had this year why because people want to know what the heck's going on um they go to the news and the news has an obligation to their shareholders to be very very creative in their way to bring people back and the media is again i don't think they're loving this from a health standpoint but from a bottom line i can't imagine they're struggling i mean this they're getting their best numbers they've had in years why because everyone's home and everyone wants to know what's going on they watch the tv because they hope that that's going to be a somewhat um honest source of information it's they're gonna keep talking about it and until the numbers start slipping and then they'll find something new to t- you know what I, you know how it goes man these this ain't all an accident on their end um anyways uh back to just life joe what are you what are you doing what's what happens to you now your daily I don't know. Just, uh, I guess not, not going to as many public places, not going out to eat as much, just kind of chilling, trying to lay low and just, you know, ride it out. Out of, out of fear or out of more financial no, uncertainty? I, I think just kind of out of like, like, yeah, let's just try not to get sick or spend too much money right now or something like that. So nothing too dramatic. You're just, you're kind of yeah, just flying just, through just lay low. with an optimistic just, just and pessimistic. Uh, pessimistic view just yeah a little bit of both um how about work do you do you work still i mean i know remotely, you you're I, I know you're control of your own schedule a little bit but remotely do you still operate I guess. okay yeah yeah you just you know do what you can remotely try not to uh be around too many nasty people <laughs> how do you know if they're nasty dude no one knows oh, oh you can tell oh you can tell you can see somebody <laughs> go oh they got the they nasty they got the covid <laughs> um all right, well, let's, I guess, get into a moto. 
stance because <clears throat> that's what this show is. And I'm sure that's why everyone's listening. They don't want to hear about our eating habits. Um, I guess I'll start with my week and how this all unfolded so I can give you guys a little bit of real time. Um, after Daytona Supercross, we went out to dinner. We always, Well, we don't always do, but we try to. As a TV crew, we get together. And I remember that night being on my phone and seeing that's when the Seattle stuff started. At least seeing stuff on the internet like Seattle's getting it bad. Like they're considering shutting down. I think it was Comic Con. Was that what it was? Did, and then did that one go through, Joe? I think that one still maybe went through. But that was the first I saw, Dan, on the internet of something is possibly going to be canceled, postponed, whatever, because of this. And that's the first thing I saw. And again, me being a little bit stuck in my own little bubble. Maybe it happened sooner, but last Saturday after Daytona is when I first got wind that something was weird. Yeah, that's... And honestly, when I saw Seattle, the talk to Seattle, I, I was I was blown away about what has transpired since then. I, I didn't think right. that we would be to the point that we are now, but being Seattle, I think they had a, a pretty large outbreak of the virus up there, so... And the, the one thing that... I saw that first made me have fear because first I heard it was like eight people have died and they're all from like the same nursing home. And I'm like, oh man, this is horrible for a select group of our population. But then I had read that a worker at CenturyLink Field who was a vendor there or in the food or something tested positive. Then I went, oh no, because now we're talking public events in essentially in the environment of where our sport would go to a big stadium. And I'm like, uh uh-oh. That was the first sign where I thought we were in trouble. Yeah. When I saw that news. But then again, do I, were you the same as me? Were you thinking, okay, maybe this screws with Seattle, but there's no way it's going to drop this quick? Because I'm immediately thinking Indy and Detroit's going to go. Seattle's going to end up having to be either pushed back or moved. But otherwise, that's it. I, I, and I, and I, I didn't know it was going to compound this fast. That, you know? That's what I thought. I thought Seattle was a thing. It was kind of an advance. They were taking some uh, precaution there. All good. I, I had no idea that it would actually turn into what it has now. Okay. Um, I'm with you. Monday comes around, Tuesday, whatever. We get to Wednesday. That's when we do our TV call, and we go over content. We kind of get on the wind, and we kind of mentioned the fact that there was – I guess we kind of toyed around with the fact that, hey, we're in uncharted territories, but there was no direct sign that we we're affected for Indy yet. We were – we were discussing indie content. We all gave our piece. We talked about it. We're building uh, storylines for the show. Everything's kind of fine. And then that's when, for me, it hit full speed. All of a sudden, I'm reading on the internet, and, and I'm getting it, obviously, from like Twitter, from Mathis, say, or different people, Michael Antonovich, and they're saying teams are meeting with Feld. All of a sudden, this information's coming out that I hadn't heard yet. And I'm going, wow, this is rapidly changing to where Thursday morning... When I'm getting ready to go to the airport to fly out to Indy, that's when the first signs of, hey, I think we're going to run, but we're going to run with an empty stadium because, of course, the governors all start coming out and putting an end to things, right? That's where it all started was the governor of Washington just brought the hammer down and canceled all the events. That's the NBA thing happens. Trump does the travel ban. It all happened like within a couple hours, it felt like, right? Did did, did that feel like that way to you guys too? It went from what the hell is going on to... Everything is shutting down. Dominoes have started. This is like Wednesday, Thursday, right? Yep. Joe, is that the same for you? I'm Uh, I'm trying to piece this all together. So for me, Thursday, I'm on the way to the airport, and I'm calling my boss and saying, hey, what are we doing? Are we good to go? And it was all in jeopardy. We're literally waiting for the governor of Indiana to come out with a press conference. Like, literally, it's supposed to happen at this time. Then this time, everyone is waiting to find out what we're going to be allowed to do Because they'd already made the decision to go racing without fans. That was a precaution. They were going to go. The the track's built. The TV trucks are there. The teams are there. Everything is there. We're going. And then Thursday, right before I get to the airport, I'm literally, Joe, just pulling on five. We're five and 99 split. I'm making the left over to the airport. And that's when I get the call. And the call is go home. And I'm just like, I'm not upset. I'm not happy. I'm I'm not not even able to process what's going on because it's now wait a minute. Indy is now canceled. There is no possible way that we can flick our fingers and Detroit's going to be fine. Seattle's after that, so now that one's gone. 
And then, boom, all of a sudden, the press releases start coming out. S- Indy's canceled. Detroit's canceled. Seattle. And then the big one comes out that the next five are canceled, and we're looking for a way to finish this thing out somehow. They never mentioned Salt Lake and Vegas in the press release, right? And I literally drive home. I don't know whether to be happy because I get to be with my kids for a little bit. I don't need to know whether to be sad because my financial world is rocked completely. I don't know whether to be mad because part of me thinks this whole thing is just a aggressively put, not, not hoaxed, but an aggressively pushed doomsday. But then part of me is also afraid like, man, I've been in these stadiums for the last few weeks. I've been traveling. I've been airport after airport after airport. Am I susceptible to some of this? Do I even go home and cuddle my kids? Like my whole brain is like processing this all in real time. And it took probably until Saturday morning when I woke up and realized that I wasn't going to the race that this whole thing is completely shook. Like my whole life is shook over this. I and, think- I'm, I, and I'm downwind, obviously. I, there's people that are getting it way worse than me and there's people that are going to be able to navigate this way better than me. But I mean, I'm in uncharted territory like the rest of us, but man, it, it didn't hit until Saturday morning. I think once they canceled Indy, once Indy was done... I think that's when the realization of because at that point NBA had canceled, NFL, all these you know sports have canceled their events. F one, I think that's when it really hit everybody that man the rest of the season is in jeopardy, and then that's when they released the press conference or the press release about you know everything the five. everything but the five were listed Vegas and Salt right, Lake right. So you want to talk about? Yeah, why don't we talk a little bit about what you kind of know. And again, I think for your own sake, you should probably be careful with what you say because yeah. obviously you have connections with some of the teams based on what you do with your tools. I know you deal with people individually and with teams a little bit. But I want to put up a little bit of a disclaimer so if everyone understands what I know, which is nothing. Um, I specifically said to my bosses i said call me when i'm going when we're going racing like i i don't need to be in the front line of this thing trying to get information again we're doing this show to hang out and let y'all know our thoughts this is not breaking news show joe we we know we know that that's not what we do here so if you're looking for that from me you're gonna get nothing because i am deliberately kind of staying in the dark i I don't even want to know the rumors because there's so many out there and i don't call me when i'm going back to work is my attitude so again, from whatever you know right now, this is from the team standpoint. Yeah, I have. N- before you told me this, I had no clue that this was even being discussed. So Feld had some meetings on Friday with some of the, the OEMs. To and I think to- those have been. I know those have been going on yeah. throughout this whole process. And again, I think y'all need to realize too. This is the chain of command goes way at the top. We're talking the, the governors, the government. Um, the company as a whole, you got to remember with Feld too, it's not just Supercross. They have all their entities are in the entertainment business. So this isn't like the day-to-day operations of Supercross are trying to figure out what to do here. This is all happening at a way higher level than you all understand. But the teams again are affected and not just the teams, but the manufacturers themselves, the OEMs, because it's not, it doesn't trickle down just to the guy, the team manager, uh, right. Dan Fahey or a Bobby Hewitt. They're dealing with this, but it's a way above them on every level. So, Feld and the, the OEMs, the factory teams, had a had a meeting on Friday, and what is potentially being talked about, and this is um, this is the this is the last. I I could see this probably happening. It's and again, you got this from one of the teams. Got this from one of the teams. So they want to run Vegas for five rounds. Well, the ultimate goal first is. To get all 17 in, so, right? I mean, that's I, that's what I've been told is that we're trying to find a way to do yeah. this season all the way. We don't, so a we couple, don't want to miss any. We want to do them all. A couple things is is Feld doesn't want to have to pay back any sponsorship money for not running that many races. I'm sure that they have some kind of event insurance. You know, say you have a torrential downpour at one event or whatever, and they have to postpone or cancel a race for one event. I'm sure they have that, but... I don't think they have anything for seven, seven, right? And again, this trickles down to the team's sponsorship. Like, if everyone's trying to survive here, then everyone wants their money back, probably, yeah. if there's a way. So you're talking every team in the pits is affected from factory KTM all the way down to, you know, AJE, Jacob Hayes' gas monkey team. Everybody has got 
sponsorship dollars affected by a, mostly on a per round basis. That's how they mostly all Correct. are. They, the other big uh, component to this is the TV contract that, you know, Feld doesn't want to have to pay back any money to NBC, uh, NBC for not having these, these rounds. So, <laughs> and again, you would think that I would know about that. That's like the furthest thing in my discussions with my boss. I have no clue on that end. So, so there's the, there's, I, have to, I obviously, Joe, have to throw that out there. There's two <clears throat> pieces to the puzzle. The other piece to this puzzle, as far as making sure that all the rounds are completed or a majority of them is per the AMA rule book, rule book they have to complete 70% of the rounds to be able to call it a championship. Yeah, I didn't know that either. So they couldn't just so at this point, How many is that of the 17? Uh, Thir- they would need to run team? about three more races to complete Their obligation of calling it a championship. Correct. So they couldn't call it right now. So initially what everybody thought that they were going to do was going to run uh, a double header in Vegas and a double header in Salt Lake. So do four more. So do four more. That would satisfy the... AMA rule book and everything else. Then the talks on Friday is what Feld is looking to, or would like to do is, and I am no, I am no way associated with Feld. This is purely coming off of what one of the teams I work with. Told so you. they want to run five rounds in Las Vegas and they want to start that in two weeks. So they over the span of I'm all in. <laughs> the, the, over the <laughs> that's it, right, Joe? We good. Over Hell the yeah. span of two weeks per se, they want to have five rounds. And then they want to go uh the five rounds from what I understand will be no fans, no attendance. It'll be teams and, and T V and only, okay. right? I, I will and I will throw this in there because I've I've heard this again, I've I've heard this on the internet. This is one of the fifty rumors I've heard. But I did look up, Joe, the Nevada governor's current situation, whatever. And as of this morning, they had not made any decisions on public gatherings. California has done 250 people or below. I know New York has done 500 people or below. So again, if that even happens, Dan, I, I don't know what it would take to run a race. But I'm assuming, again, with no fans, they, you can modify this thing to make it work. And again, the state of Nevada, as of this morning, has not put any of those um, restrictions yet on public gatherings. Well, you have to and look- they declared a national emergency. I know that, but they also did that when the shooting happened in Vegas. And when the, yeah. a government, in a state government, does a national emergency, it gives them the access to be able to do certain things. That doesn't just mean everything shuts down. The, San Francisco, Joe, had a city state of emergency like two months ago over this before there was one case. So again, I, just don't mix up the two. When you hear national state of emergency or a, or a state state of emergency, that doesn't mean everyone's locked in their house. We're not there yet. A, so a, Nevada a couple, is still in play. They haven't done anything yet. Yeah, and a couple a couple things with, with having the race in Nevada is, for one, Nevada's industry and economy is driven by gambling, right? Mm-hmm. So if... And, and this could totally change if the federal government comes down and says nothing over that's it. whatever. Everybody go home. So at this point, it's it's up it's to still the, a state, the governor. It's still a right? state by state issue. So if the Nevada governor was to, was to close, you know, or put the 250 people gathering, that shuts down all the casinos. So their economy and everything is done. So they're I think they're going through every measure not to do that, taking precautions not to have to do that until the federal government steps in and says, all right, that's it. Everybody, 14 days, go home. That's it. The other thing is Sam Boyd Stadium is one of the other, the only venues that the Supercross race in May, or end of April, I guess, is the last event ever to be held at Sam Boyd Stadium. So there's nothing after, there's there's nothing going on there. It's and the rent there. is super, super cheap. Well, right, obviously, because they they're not a... High, they're not the Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Let's, yeah, let me tell you, Joe. I know you haven't been to Sam Boyd, but they're not very similar. Um, so <laughs> closer would, to closer to Oakland <laughs> Stadium than Mercedes Benz oh, or man. AT&T oh, Stadium. Man. So then they from there they would go to Salt Lake City and That's why the Raiders a, don't play at Sam Boyd. <laughs> 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 They'd run a, a double header in, in Salt Lake City. To satisfy. Which okay, okay. There's a couple things to that too. Um, I would assume. As long as Utah, which I never checked, they're not wanting to move the last round. Change. I've seen people with ideas that just postpone, move everything back. 
There's been a lot of advertisement dollars around the Salt Lake final. There's a reason why they got the final. They're they're dumping money in to make sure that that's a big bang and end. I don't think that one's as easy to just move around either because you've got college football. There's other things coming behind that one, to your point. And you're not just going to go, well, thanks, Salt Lake. You can run this one. But now we're going to go back to Vegas again later and run a foul. So I think, I would think, looking at the calendar, the ultimate goal is to fit everything in before Salt Lake so you still end on time and then everything can carry on as usual. It's just a race against the federal government shutting it all down or the state of Nevada shutting it down. That's all it is. And then again... Who knows where we're going to be in a week? Look what happened in the last week. We, next week, this could be all cleared up, and we could be like, oh, we overreacted, but it was for everyone's best interest. We're good. Let's go. Or it could be, no, the whole world is shut down. Everyone get in your homes. That could be where we're at in a week. Yeah. So here's the... Are, would you be surprised either way? No. Joe, no. would you? I mean, it, this could go... This could go anywhere now. I'd be surprised if it's worse in a week. So, so you think we're going to rebound the other way? Maybe not within the next week, but it'll. I think we'll be rebounding quicker than not. Do you do you think Joe that the federal government will step in and make us shut down? I mean, do you, do you see no, that? I don't. You, think, don't, okay. no, you I still don't think, think it'll so. go state by state? Yeah. Okay. So um, here, all so right. So back. So back to Dan. What what you had heard. So here's the other thing: is uh, if they decide to run five rounds in Vegas and then doublehead Salt Lake, double your Salt seven Lake. in. The teams and the riders are not happy about going to uh, Vegas for five weeks. All um, of them, though, or to be fair, is there just one that you have heard specifically? There's one that I have heard specifically. Which one? I'm going to leave that unnamed. <laughs> um, leave the team and the rider uh, out of the conversation. What color? It, it, it would suck really bad um, if, if this particular rider decided that he didn't want to line up. I can tell you right now, too, if if that was the case, if this thing doesn't work out because of one rider and team specifically and it ever got out who it was, I don't think it'd be a good look for them as a rider. It better not be Cooper Webb. <laughs> no, speaking of Cooper, I tried to get him to come on today and he says it's Sunday and he's off on Sunday so he can't come on the it show. It better not be Eli Tomac. He said Monday. No, Eli wants it done now, I'm guessing. Call it. Screw the AMA 70% rule, right, Dan? Yeah. Eli said, dude. But in, in all reality, Give me that like, trophy. It's done. As a Tomac fan, right? This sucks. I mean, because because if you win it, what, Dan, a, you don't want the asterisks. Yeah, I, I don't. But to be fair, he is in the best position that he's ever been in at this point in the season. Well, and if it goes so, to Vegas for five rounds, dude, the dude he's crushes Vegas. Vegas. He's probably like, this couldn't be better than for me. Indy, uh, Seattle. There's some places out there that have been able to catch me in the past. He ain't slowed down in Vegas and Salt Lake, dude. He, if, if there's seven rounds left in those two venues, he's loving life. He might win the last seven. Like He's yeah. incredible in both those stadiums. Um, anyways, go back to what you're saying. So there's a team and a rider who specifically are well, not, it's in, not, not into it's this. It's not one team. All the teams are not pumped about it. From factory teams to you know privateers. Why, to, though? Why? Well, Explain to me. I, I would love to know their point of view of why this is bad for them. Uh... I think that they believe that there's a higher risk of injury running five races over the course of two weeks. Um, there's, um, there's that's, risk. that's stupid, but go I ahead. I agree, but there's a risk of, of getting sick. There's logistic issues, you know, having to find somewhere to, to stay, hotels nah. and, and everything. I, I don't believe this that, that portion to be that big of a deal, um, but... Yeah, they're they're not it's happy just about my it. opinion. If if again, if the teams or riders whatever don't want to play ball with this, um, I, I find that to be I mean, again. I, it's not fair of me to say. I don't know their point of view on this, but I would say, generally speaking, I I don't understand what the problem would be. I feel like that would be it would be detrimental to not allow this thing to close out the seventeen. You know what I mean, Joe? I I might am I being too nice here? I just think that's ridiculous. Injury, sickness, what what from being in Vegas for two weeks? Maybe maybe you don't want your riders there because you don't want them partaking in Vegas life. You don't but, want them at the Bunny Ranch yeah. every night. Yeah, no, but what I'm getting at is I I, I don't see how that changes anything what, what, because you run race. Uh, you think they're going to run a, the same format exactly? I mean, there will be some concession on how it would be ran. I just think it's ridiculous that there would be pushback from the riders and teams. Yeah. They have obligations to fulfill sponsorship stuff too. Sure. And so the riders, I, I think, 
are the right unless these writers aren't paid per round maybe they're just paid a blanket salary then yeah of course they're like yeah screw it i don't i'd rather not race if i don't have to if i'm getting paid but for a lot of the rest of us it's per round yeah and that's I, it, how- it's a huge effect on the majority of everyone in the sport on a per round basis and if they want to fight that for a bunch of bigoty reasons in my opinion then again, I think it would be best in their best interest to not let the world know that it is them that don't want to do it. Because I think a lot of people would come down pretty hard on them individually. So that's 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 just my opinion. It better not be Ken Roxon. I don't know who it is. I'm saying Obviously, a name Dan, and then I keep looking at Dan's face to see if he's going to give it away. Dan is Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Stone he has not broken face since he said this. So Stone Cold. Snap and I want to I want to I want to put another just personal disclaimer. I was not in those meetings. I was not on the phone. This is straight. This is coming from. A couple of the teams that I work with, so the information is pretty consistent, right? So, um, but that's, uh, I think that's what I personally, I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly think that the government's going to come in and make us all go home. And, and if that happens, then, then it's out. Who cares? This, this is, is a pointless done. conversation anyway, if that's um, what happens. When do you think that that might happen, Dan? I, the way it's accelerating? I would say Monday, Tuesday. Whoa. I mean, if, honestly, if it happens, if the way may- it's accelerating, th- that decision would have to be made pretty quick. They're not going to just ride this out and feel it out. Like, there are some stats going on in their inner, the government's inner chambers that are showing them trends and whatever. They would be making that decision off of things that we don't know. You know what I mean? If we make Do you it- think the federal government is finding things out at the same time we are? No, they're, they're in front of yeah. this. So whatever they're deciding... We're on the back end of that decision. So that's what I'm saying is if that's the thing, the federal government's going to come in here and just shut the whole thing down, then they know things right now from a week or two ago that we have no clue on. You know what I mean? Inside data on what's actually happening. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Again, I don't, I don't want to get into a, a foreign thing here, but Joe, you've probably read that you know, the ambassador to China got called in and was pretty, given a stern, hey, shut your mouth because... Chinese government is spreading information that our CIA started this. That our that's, CIA started this? That's what they're saying. On their public television, uh, public is, I'll use the word lightly, uh, their television from their government is saying that our CIA started this and dropped it on their population. Dropped it on their yes, population. Yes, that's what they're saying on their television channels. Sounds- you got to remember, we watch our TV. How much truth, how much do you believe it? I 50-50? Less and less, less every day. Okay, now imagine there's other governments that have their TV channels telling their populations what they want to tell them, true or false, but those conversations are happening. And again, whatever the truth is, what I'm getting at is we're behind that a few weeks. So th- th- we're on the back end of whatever is being decided right now. We, we have no, we're just waiting. We're wait- That's why for me, I'm waiting for a call. Am I working or not? I don't, I don't know. I think if we make it through next week, and we don't hear anything, and there's no travel bans. There's no. Then it turns around. I think. I think it turns around. But I, I figured that we'd probably hear something fairly soon, right? If they make that decision. I mean, what, what's what's why wait, right? Let's just if that if that's what they're thinking now. Let's just nip it in the well, bottle. Okay. Let's do it now I, and get it over here's with. Here's an example. My kid's school got shut out until December six or uh, April sixth. Okay. They haven't gone past that because they don't know yet. You know what I mean? They, we're, we're, we're shut down until then. That doesn't mean we're going back on the 7th. That means we don't know yet. It means m- late March, we might find out it's late April before they go back. You know what I mean? The, this constant, We're in this state of wait and see for the next month's decisions. Like, March is done. March and early April is done. This thing, all sh- we're all shut down. The whole world. But in a week from now, we'll be making decisions for what happens middle to late April. And or maybe through the summer, maybe they come out and say, "Hey, we're shutting this thing down for two weeks, or a month, or three months, or or never mind. Our bad. We're good. Just fire it all back up." There's, there's, there's. It's a wait and see. And again, we're we are waiting for decisions that happen happen at the federal government level and at the state level. And that's what our sport is at the jeopardy right now of state government and federal governments. But again, to your to my point, Dan, is if I'm hearing rumblings that there's already a pushback from the teams that don't want to make this happen and don't try to find a way to do a, a full championship, then I am I'm pissed and I can't I can't help but feel that way. I'm personally affected by this. If it's six rounds instead of seven, it's that's 
that's a that's a big deal to me. And am I being insensitive? Maybe Joe, am I, tell me if I'm being insensitive because it's a worldwide pandemic and I'm sitting here worried about my pocket. But is that, am I being that way? Because if I am, I'm sorry. But no, I, I have an obligation to take care of my family, and my family's my ability to do that is being shook right now. And if I again, if it's if there's pushback because of logistic reasons from the teams, I'm I'm furious. Sorry. So I don't want to be the bearer of bad news today. Too late. <laughs> I know. But what else? Um, the I, I know that Hangtown is in I, severe I, jeopardy. I know that too, and I know that the first um, three are. Yeah, um, I know that because of Corona. Because well, of the investments needed, that those races, how much four to six weeks probably have to start pumping up yeah. their spending. So, so right now, and the, I know it's like over a hundred grand, I think, to put on uh, those. It's way more than that. Okay, by these it's promoters. a huge investment, and right now is the time that they need to uh, start paying for the things and investing the money into the race infrastructure, that in advertisement, May. right? And with the the ban of the the two hundred fifty people gathering. They don't know if, even if it was lifted, they have to pay for that stuff now. And they're not going to want to invest that money into what potentially could not even happen. And now their money's gone. So, um, so they're almost having to push back everything yeah. or make a decision right away that, well, we're not doing it. And that, that's the word that I've heard. I've heard that too. And I've heard that's the first three rounds um, that are being affected on the decision making side because again you get the break after a Colorado you don't get to Mount Morris till whenever so th- they're not really in a position to have to make decisions Here, yet here's the upside to that the first three do here's the upside is is the first three rounds are fairly close to the west coast right so after Indiana they would come back to the west coast they would run Colorado uh, hang I would probably say they would run Hangtown and then Fox Raceway right because then the teams would be down in Southern California mm. if they wanted to logistically make it right, but mm-hmm. they could easily, there's plenty of time to, to run the rest of our three rounds at the at end the of the back season. End. Now, bring them the, all, bring them all back to the West coast anyway. Now here's the other thing, right now we're talking, uh, you know, getting close to motocross as nations time. Uh, you, right? you don't want to hear my opinion on that, but here we go. Here's a positive. If we're already in the motocross mode, man, that should "Quote unquote," help us right if if they've been riding moto. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I, I again I on the list of my priorities, uh, it, it, even in the sports importance, that is at the very bottom. Oh, in I my agree. opinion, like okay, so our three guys that have to go over to Europe and deal with that one race means nothing to me compared to our Supercross Championship, our Motocross Championship, Monster Cup. All those are way higher priority than the Motocross Nations, a one off. Um, race, so I, I I don't even I don't care about that race at all. I don't care if we land our last three outdoors right on top of it. Who cares? I agree. Right now, um, I will tell you one more thing I've heard before we take a break, Joe, because I do want to turn this around and try to make it fun. This episode, the one thing that I have heard um, in a conversation that I had with someone that's pretty in the end is that a lot of this is being looked at from a legal standpoint because of our Sue Happy culture. Uh, A lot of the state governments are, the reason why one entity, say Washington, went first and then the rest followed quick is because of lawsuits. Now, Joe, if you're the governor of, say, let's just go somewhere where there's no race. Let's go Wyoming. And all the other states are dropping or putting restrictions on entertainment, blah, 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 blah. And if you're the one that doesn't, and then something happens at one of your events, the the Cheyenne Supercross or the Cheyenne basketball game, whatever... Cheyenne, Wyoming. Do you see how down the line, how liable you could be from an insurance standpoint and a payout and lawsuits because you decided to run when others didn't? Washington didn't do it. Neither did Indiana and Michigan, but Cheyenne, Wyoming, you idiots ran. You see why all the governments are now trying to, I mean, they're weighing their options and going, oh, screw this. We're going to, if we run these things, we're going to end up getting sued massively by allowing this to happen when clearly there were signs that you should have stopped. And I heard that that is one of the biggest deciding factors right now. It's not even on the virus side. It's more on the side of what happens if one, two, or 10 people get it at one of your events. How far down the line is the government liable? And that's why the government has reacted so fast to shutting it down. It's more of a, 
it's not just the virus. It's there's other layers too. It's not just oh we don't want anyone to get sick because we don't want them to get a cough and we don't want an 80 year old to at the nursing home to pass away from this. It's no, if anyone gets sick, we could get sued. And that to me that's rough, dude. Like if that's part of the decision like I think everything should be designed around the safety of the human being and pass if there's other implications like lawsuits, that's yeah. That's sad that that's part of it. You know what it's I mean? The world that, we live in, though. I know it is, and that's just Again, there's so many layers to this. There's so many layers. Um It's brutal. And again, um I just want to throw out there again, maybe I'm being extremely personally selfish on this, but I just think everything is being uh, I think it's an overreaction, in my opinion, and I hope it sorts itself out so everybody, everybody the <laughs> From the top to the bottom, end up coming out okay on this thing. Um, and again, I'm not trying to be insensitive to the virus itself. I'm just, I've just, I've seen enough over the how many years now to know that everything gets handled so dramatically, and this one's finally catching up to all of us, and not just one industry or two. It's, it's all the way down to again, Sierra Nevada up in Chico is shutting down. Yeah, completely. I mean, even brewing beer. They're done, Joe. They're they're done. That sucks. I like that beer. That's one of my go-tos. <laughs> that was one of my stops, man, when I was in Chico. It was. Yeah, they used to, once a month, man, I'd get a case of beer out of there for free. Nice. Yeah. Good All right, anything else to add on the doom and gloom before we try to have fun the rest of the way out? Here's what I hope. My hope is... Yeah, to, yeah, let's let's hear that. Is, what's, your, is, what's your solution if, if you well, can wave the magic wand? What would you, what would you want to see happen, That I this guess? would just go away, but it's... Here's, here's what I hope is through all this we're so divided right the country is so divided that we we kind of come together you know what i mean and realize that this is this is crazy it's impossible though. this is it, 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 it i think you're right i think it is impossible. go watch the news for an hour and flip, yeah flip between two channels and you'll understand right away that that's impossible we'll never know if we overreacted with this or if we reacted properly but I would hope that it just, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. That it just kind of brings everybody together and, and something like this doesn't happen again. And there's other precautions taken so it doesn't happen again so people don't have to react like this again. You know, because like I said before, man, what if we had a huge natural, I mean, I, I kind of went through it, right? In my, when Paradise, the Paradise fire burned, that was my route, you know? Yeah, Dan Laos, so, like, lost half of his route. So I saw that, you know, and the people came together, and it just seemed like the community just strengthened. And I would hope something like this would do something for our country. So something like this doesn't happen on a scale like this again. Yeah. And, and again, if, if this thing turns into a true pandemic, Joe, where... I mean, it just sweeps the country and sweeps the world. Then I completely understand everything that we're doing. I'm just, I'm almost just throwing out that if this ends up being an overreaction and we're all good in a month, I'll be, I'll be pretty annoyed by our society. Yeah. But the problem is, and then it'll be spun with, well, we handled it the right way. If this would have been a pandemic if we didn't do all this. Where I, I guess this is like the true. Uh, hindsight is 2020 we'll all look back at the end of this and then try to piece together what we thought worked what we thought didn't work what we thought was right what we thought was wrong but right now in the middle of it like i said I, we're, we're all affected by this and not from an entertainment standpoint not because it's saturday night and i don't know what to watch everyone and everyone that's saying that i know you're all being funny like i'm i'm bored too i last night i didn't know what to do um i'm thinking more on the lines of how it affects everybody economically because there's a lot of people that are that run their life at a bare minimum off of what happens on Saturday nights or in the NBA on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. and Saturdays. Everyone's being affected by this. And if this is just a crazy overreaction and it ends up screwing everybody emotion or um, financially over something that was just an overreaction, that'll be a big bummer. Um, I hope that this, whatever we're doing, I hope this does just put an end to it. You know what I mean? The spread, whatever. Here's my but last we'll, hope. But we won't know until we won't know until that we're done with it. Here's That's my last hope. I want 17 rounds. Tomac crowned as the champion. <laughs> That's it. In a in a perfect world, my hope is that next week things calm down. We all realize that we're good and we put this thing together and we make it work. 
um, wherever. I, I, I think the Vegas idea is incredible. And the reason why is, Joe, you know Britney Spears, Celine Dion. They run there. What, what do they call that? Where they, where they just run <clears throat> in one city forever. It, it's just a show. It becomes a standard show. It's called a residency. Residency. I, I hope that somehow this gets fixed uh, from a world perspective in the next week or two where we all get on the same page and we start running our lives normal. I hope that the Supercross runs a residency in Vegas. I would love nothing more than to go there and knock out a bunch of races all in a row and not have to go to the East Coast or run it late. Um, and I hope that we do all 17 and we get a 250 West, 250 East, and a 450 Champion in a creative way. And I hope that it all works out. And I hope that every rider um, benefits, I hope every team. I hope failed. I hope myself. I hope we all can glue this thing back together and end up okay. That's my ultimate goal. And again, if the virus affects that in any way, then I completely understand. But if it becomes a pushback because of um, little tiny logistical reasons, I'll, I'll be I'll be pretty pissed off. That's you know what I mean. If the virus ends this thing, I'm cool with it. I guess. If some bickering um, in the logistics holds this back, I will I will be publicly pretty upset and privately ten times worse. So, all right. Joe, commercial break. Have some fun. Try. Let's do it. Main, main, main event moto. There's a reason I run DRS suspension and race tech hard parts with Mika Metals chains, bars, and sprockets on Evan 65. First off, DRS suspension settings work everywhere. I haven't changed a clicker since I put them on. Maybe it's the internals from Racetech that give it that extra something. American-made products with a 100% guarantee. You don't see that every day. Yeah, the DRS Racetech combo works for me. And what can I say about Mika? First off, they've been with us since the beginning. The quality of their bars is top of the line, and Mika is the only chain and sprocket combo I run. Motoheads, get with the program. It's DRS Suspension, Racetech, Mika Metals. Say it again. It's DRS Suspension, Racetech, Mika Metals. Is that good? Yeah. I love when NorCal companies take the world by storm. Guts Racing seat covers and no-toe filters are made right here at home, but their products travel the country and world on some of the baddest dudes' bikes in pro racing. Who runs Guts? Too many factory teams to list, Joe. Who runs No-Toil? Well, it's the only filter Chad Reed will run. Guts and No-Toil make only the best. So visit GutsRacing.com and NoToil.com and step up your game, Motoheads. Look good? Check. Protection? Check. Fly Racing has had the gear game on lock for years, but the Formula Helmet has taken Fly to another level. They didn't just make a high-quality helmet, they redefined the standard for the most important piece of safety equipment on a rider's body. Use your head and protect your head. Run the Fly Formula Helmet. Then cover the rest of your body in Fly's evolution and kinetic gear lines. Easy decision. Main Event Moto Podcast. Ooh, we. The one benefit to this, Dan, is we. Well, we can't because it's pouring down rain. But get out and ride your bike. Yeah. If no one's working. If no one's going to school, I'll tell you right now. If the weather was good, Evan would have his most productive month in his little career. We'd be there every day, but of course, it's pouring down rain. I was at the, the, the one of the big dealerships, motorcycle dealerships in town, yesterday, and uh, dude, they were packed. Uh, it is not. It ain't scaring us. No, it's. I don't think it's scaring us down as an industry individual. Again, the entertainment side is getting affected, but I think the participation side, I think it's good. I mean, I'll tell you right now, Joe, let, let's go through our list. Fly Racing, they got their new spring gear. Dude, spring's coming regardless. Like, get in the dealership and get the gear. I know I got some. I got a set for me for futures, which is not... As long as Salt Lake's on the schedule, I'm still on the schedule. D don't even smile, man. I'm not wearing. <laughs> if, if this, if the futures gets canceled and I can't race because of that, I'm not wearing Fox Bull. gear. Joe, hey, hey, man. I mean, what do you think, Joe? <laughs> Joe's gonna be the ref on this. Joe, I said, Dan said that if I race, do I have to do is race? And you, yeah. wear, and you wear fly gear? Yeah. Head to toe. Head, Me? Yeah. <laughs> Head to toe. No boots. I okay. Got no boots. <laughs> and if I don't race, Joe, then I have to wear Fox gear. If I Jersey can't race, pant glove. if I can't race because glove. of this, that's not fair. Dude, that I would have to wear. I didn't the make Fox the rules. Hey, hey, man, I didn't hear any type of uh, exceptions for acts of God or anything. There were no caveats involved. So if you don't race, you don't race. Boom. That's bull, in my opinion. Sorry, I mean, Daddy. I'll get the new catalog for you. You can, you can next, even pick it out next time. You gotta. 
put a put a couple of disclaimers well, in there. Oh, good. And then when I run out of toilet paper, I'll use the Fox gear. <laughs> hey, did you see what I posted last night? No. You didn't see it Mm-mm. on my story. Oh, uh, that explains why Web won't come on. Why? Uh, I took a video of me using the cover and a fan, um, Racer X. I'm sorry about this. It was a joke, but I used the cover of a Racer X with Cooper Webb on it, and I told him that this is my backup toilet paper. <laughs> look, look at that. And he didn't respond. He wasn't impressed. Uh, oh, I know. I saw. Oh, I did see that. Eagle grit. Hey, Eagle grit hand wipes. They're not just for your hands, folks. If you run out, what else to, are they you for? You go to. To the bottom end, bro. <laughs> Dude, uh, you can go to eaglegrit.com. You can go to Amazon. The hand wipes, uh, uh, Dan, they work incredible on awesome. all parts of the body. Yep. Man, if we could somehow get some like disinfectant mm. sprayed on add-on, dude. You just dump, double the, just double dump the rate. alcohol into Hey, I thing. should probably go right mm. now and double the price on all those things because when everything runs out, Eagle Grit, we got, we're stocked on hand wipes. You guys want them? Hit us up, eaglegrit.com. No discounts. We're we're going over retail value on this. Gouge one. those victims. <laughs> That's right, dude. You guys can suffer. Um, Mika Metals. You need some new bars? Go to MikaMetals.com. Thirty percent off if you use the code Main Event Moto. I mean, dude, if, if you're getting ready to ride, you might as well get some new bars. You know, yours are all bent. Come on now. What else we got? No toil, dude. Dan, love Ryan. You can literally. I said every you can, time. You can throw your filters right in the wash machine. I just did. I just did yesterday. So did I. I did. Um, I did a couple of mine and a couple of Jacobs. EMT Racing, right now is the time to get your bike rebuilt, modded. Viral Moto. Oh, by the way, Viral Moto, killing it. Um, you know they're doing donations for, see, God, we've, this sped by, but the, the Tennessee uh, tornado, like they were directly affected by that, and they have friends and family that were too, so Viral Moto is uh, kind of doing this thing for Nashville for the recovery, which is awesome. Old Me Creations, get some new graphics. Motorsport.com, by the way, these listener questions. We're going to give a gift card to whoever is the funny. Uh, uh, not funniest. What do we say? Just most entertaining comment of these 20 or so? Yeah. And we'll vote on it. Um, All American Chevy of Colleen, look. You go get, get a van? New, go get a new van. Uh, it's, we're working on it. I want yeah. one really bad. I want a new van. Uh, screen printing done. Of course, Neil's not. He's working. Neil's cranking it out. Guts Racing, do you think Andy Gregg has stopped at a time like this? Hell no. Hell no. Dude, I love my Guts. If your name is Guts <clears throat> Racing, you don't stop for a silly virus. Andy I'm Gregg sorry. is the Chuck Norris of this shit. He is. He don't <laughs> care. Uh, Scott, USA Prospect listener questions. Of course, you need some new goggles. Scott has this great lens. It actually deflects coronavirus, too. So if you get roosted by it, that's why they have that big old lens, is to deflect coronavirus. Dude, prospect Roost. goggle and a mask, you're good to go. Right now is the best time to get your suspension serviced. DRS suspension, of course, if you're in California on the West Coast, but any race tech certified dealer, now is the time. Get in there, get your stuff serviced, and of course, uh, the Law Tigers, Joe, they want to see me race. They're in on that. They, they, they are sponsoring this show specifically because they believe in me, and that feels great. That does feel good. I believe in you, too. I don't think you do. <laughs> I don't think Joe does, either. <laughs> oh, I believe in you, Poppy. I think Joe publicly does. Privately, I think he, he's concerned. <laughs> um, anyways, all right, Joe, let's do our Scott USA Prospect listener hey, question. Hey, real quick. What? I got something to clear up with Joe. Joe, I love you. Uh-oh. Here's why. After the last show I was on, I got multiple DMs and phone calls asking why I don't like you. <laughs> and why uh, we don't get along. Mm, really? And, I saw um, that a little bit too. What did little... we argue about? Who? Or you two? Did you guys I argue? They said some? I ignored you. I oh, ignored yeah. all your questions. Oh, wow. And you I'm were like, dodging, really? Huh? I'm like, I, I was like, I love Joe. And they're like, Oh, it didn't seem like it. And I'm like, no, dude, we're good. And <laughs> well, well, no, we're think, not good, Dan. Doesn't say oh, you might think shit. you are. Publicly, Joe. we're good. So Privately, we're not. I got a text <laughs> message yesterday that said, hey, I know you're going on the show tomorrow. Make sure you're nice to Joe. Oh, so, man. Yeah. Did you, Why you hate me, Dan? Dude, I don't know. Did, did you I, feel anything? Did I do something to you? No. I felt the hate. I'd give you a, I'd give you a hug, Joe, but I'm doing this social distancing thing. <laughs> yeah. so. But uh, we're good, right? I mean... I'm good with you. I don't know if you're good with me, though. I'm great with you, Joe. All right. All right. Clear it up. No All more right. DMs. All right. Yeah, back good. off. Joe you and I are good. fine. Try, trying to create... Daniel's going to hate me I after mean, he wears the fox gear, but I mean, I'm okay with, I'm okay with yeah, that. My, our, feelings, our, our my listeners, feelings are hurt every time you come and leave, Dan, but, you know. <laughs> For what reason, we don't know. All right. Scott, USA prospect listener question. I'm glad you guys are good. So here's the thing. Uh, I put it out there. I wanted some ideas on how to close down this championship, and I think us three are going to decide... 
if somebody has a worthy idea or at least entertains us, and we'll give a gift card. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, let's start with the first one. Cody Seiler says Vincent gets to decide how everyone finishes. Hmm. I know who'd get last. <laughs> yeah, Dan's not agreeing with that. <laughs> Eli would get 30th in points, um, and Malcolm would probably win, right? Is that his, I, I would assume if Vincent got to just pick the winner, he picks Malcolm. For oh, sure. yeah, for sure. Um, no, Cody, uh, no gift card for that. That's, that's funny and all. I, I'm just glad Vincent's not on this episode. He would have a lot of strong opinions on what he thinks, and we all know Vincent just thinks things. Oh, and, boy. So, sorry, Vincent, but... No, even though he's right in the middle of this. I know yeah. that. I mean, he's in the hospital, so I, he probably would be a good source of information. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. It's funny, though, because I know some nurses and stuff that work in the hospital, and they think it's a joke. Like, um, they are not concerned I know, at I all. know a lot of doctors that think it's a joke, too. Um, and think, again, this is just, this is just um, a manufactured crisis outside of just a normal, simple thing. Yeah. Which, to this point, it is. But if the numbers keep doubling and tripling and whatever... Whatever. Uh, next one, Joe. Our boy RH22 says postpone Supercross, run regular race weekends once we're able to, push back outdoors so that there isn't a break before motocross donations. No excuse for riders to want a vacation and skip it. Boom, everyone wins. Other than I think. I mean, that all would be, I think that's a perfect world, right? If you yeah. could magic wand, then everything just picks up behind. All the stadiums are available. We go to Indy in four weeks or five weeks. That that would be perfect. I just that's the logistical thing that is yeah. impossible because stadiums won't be available then. They got to start getting ready for other events, whatever. It, remember how we always talk about how the schedule is hard to figure out sometimes, and they got to put things in certain weekends, and you're like, why would they put St. Louis? The stadium availability is complicated and they're years out like they are planning these things a year in advance i was gonna so say aren't they two years out they're, they're usually like 2021 is probably getting close you know what i mean like so to just push it all back isn't that simple in a perfect world it would be great if everything just moved back in time and we just all got a month off to chill with our friends and family i just think logistically there's no possibility that that would work it's and obviously that's why they're not discussing that option it doesn't it doesn't work it would be it would be perfect if it could, but next one. Chris saw it out in 94. Is coronavirus a conspiracy by Cowie and Tomac to cancel the rest of the season and win by default now that he has the red plate? That dude ain't getting the gift card to tell you that right now. I don't know. Put him so, on the list. So far, that's number one. To my, I mean, right <laughs> now, through three questions, he's winning. Dan, I'm sorry. That hurts your little feelings. But you know that Cowie and Eli are the only ones right now that are saying, call this sucker. I don't call think it. so. Call it. I, there's no way he wants to win the title like this. There's I, no way. And there's He would rather win the title like this than I, lose it any other way, in my opinion, right? If Eli ever came out and said, I'm glad I won the title like this and blah, 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 blah. Well, he would Dude, never I am say instantly that. not a Tomac fan, so... Public versus I don't private have to worry conversations, about that, right, Joe? No one would ever <laughs> publicly say that's what they want, but privately, end the sucker and send the check. That's what I'm just joking, obviously. Um, but that's the gift card winner so far. Long way to go, though. Next one, Joe. Shane Whitaker, 25. Do a round at each manufacturer's practice track. A lot of people wrote that one in, and I like that. How cool would it be right now if you just got some of the high rise, um, you know, what are those? Things you can put up like at a job site. Scaffolding? Scaffolding. Sorry, God, my brain sometimes. Put the cameras up on every angle and go, look, all right, Monday we're going to Cowie. Wednesday we go Honda. And we do seven rounds and we close this title out at the test tracks. That would be sick. Again, logistically, 1,000% impossible. But I wouldn't. It'd be cool. Could you imagine? What if? What, what would you do, Joe, if, if you're Eli and it's Cowie day? And then Roxon shows up and waxes you on your practice Ooh, track. Ooh, wee. That'd be tough. I mean, or, or I mean, yeah, it, it'd be fun to think about in, a, in an imaginative world. That would be cool if we were. And I saw somebody, I forget, online post, I think it was Kyle Chisholm, Stu's track, um, Carmichael's house. Uh, just start going to like all these sick places like Alden's track. Like just go to all these places and run, you know, a one off race. Super creative and fun, but um, no, I'm still giving it to the guy who wants Cowie to end this championship. So far. Sorry, Dan. 
XOXO Lindsay says, stop the season here, pick up A1 with the points just how they are, and run next season from this Ooh. as the starting point instead of everyone at zero. So a so a two year title so a twenty seven round supercross championship. That's what they've talked about in the past anyways, right? Just a two year deal? That'd be wild. Um, logistically, I think no one would be on board with that. No, I, I, I like it though. I, again, these kind of things, scenarios just for me are fun, and I like that one, but no gift card because it's impossible. Dylon 244 race Wednesday and Saturday, the same venue, but flip the track around backwards and fix the rhythm sections between Wednesday and Saturday. So, Wednesday, run it four way, and Saturday, run it backwards, just like Dallas Supercross Amateur Day. I think Th- that is that is logistically probably in the ballpark of what's likely. Correct. To be honest, on think about this. All right, just let's just play this out as a possibility for fun. You got seven rounds to fit in. Um, let's say over a three week period, you go to Vegas. You race Saturday, then you race Tuesday, then you race Thursday. Then you go Saturday, Sunday. You, you knock out five, or, or even, or even you go into the next week. Over a th- three-week period, you somehow fit in seven. That's twenty-one days. So every three days, somehow you run a race. Again, do you realize how good that would be, for, like for television? I mean, it would be horrible for live attendance because they probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. But if you wanted to actually run a televised event and you run every single three days, and of course these networks are probably desperate for content, nothing's running live. Yes, in the stadium it would be the weirdest thing ever, but on television it would be the best. You would have a seven-round championship handled over 21 days, and you would have insane TV ratings. And insane, fine. And that's why I don't understand why the teams would push back logistically. It would be a, res- a residency over two locations for a couple weeks, yeah. and you would get more TV time than you've probably gotten all year long because everyone's desperate for something. Um, and it would be just a condensed runoff championship. I, I and financially, right? You, the, the travel, the travel would be, yeah. You uh, and then the f- financial for Feld. You know, they have all. They already have the dirt in the stadium. They've already got the equipment. It works there to for them. The track. It crushes it for TV. Yeah. It crushes it for saving as much money as possible on Feld. Again, you're you're getting hammered by the live attendance, no matter what. No matter what. But at least from a financial standpoint, now you you have the dirt in the stadium. You you the track who comes in and changes it again. It's a small floor. There's six different lanes there. You run all these different combinations. You move some things around, and you run a, a seven-round championship in two locations for three weeks. Again, it's good for the riders because the riders are, I mean, they're they're getting to finish their championship. Think about the amount of bonuses Eli Tomac, Ken Rocks, and Cooper Webb could win over a three-week period. If yeah. you win four of those things, dude, you're making so much money. I, I, again, I feel like it's the best for everybody. I don't understand what the problem would be with it logistically, unless someone's just being a bigoty. That's it. That's it. I don't. I don't see the negatives. I don't see the negatives. Um, I mean, I would love. Okay, I'm gonna open up the door to Pandora's box, but let me know what the negatives would be to running a condensed seven rounds in a three week period over two locations. Tell me what the problem is there. I, um, I want to know. I, wa- I really want to know. I'm opening it up. D- DM, not me on my personal. DM Main Event Motos. <laughs> so, just DM Main Event Motos and let me know what the problem is with that scenario. And Joe, put him in line for the gift card because it's to me that is so. I, it, it just makes sense. So put him down. Dan, are we cool with that guy? Yeah. Any, no, that's anything to get it off the other guy. Yep. Right? <laughs> next one. Andrew SS 170. Make the next race a triple crown. Each main event is worth 26 points. The track has to have three dragons backs and change the whoops every main. See, that one don't work for me very well because I don't get paid per triple crown race. <laughs> so, <laughs> so getting three rounds done in one night doesn't do it for your boy. I'll tell you that right now. Um, no. No gift card. Sorry. Uh, no. And my wife and kids say no also. Next one. Bath 450. I was making my run at the main event Moto Fantasy Championship. If the season ends now, do I get to come in studio since I had the championship in the bag? I'm currently in 9,999th place. That's right around where I am. Where are you, Dan? I don't even know. I'm in the 500s, dude, and I've I've been trying hard, and I'm getting worked, man. The more Um, I try... 
the worst idea. I, I agree. If I pick on Wednesday, and those I those are my best my weeks team, too. It's, yeah, my best weeks are when I pick before practice and yep. I just leave Me it. Me too. Um, as far as main event moto fantasy league goes, again, we do a chase format on that, and it's supposed to be through the first twelve rounds, and then we reset for the last five. So. It's up in the air. Uh, luckily for all you who play, it didn't cost you a dollar to play. So I don't want to hear you whining if this thing gets ruined. Um, Time out. I'm sorry. I want to address that too. Oh, and that that actually does affect me. The guy who won last year's Fantasy League, Joe, I heard he got him his flights for Denver. So he's supposed to be going to the Denver Supercross, and I already booked the flight. Dang. Everybody Ouch, I forgot about that till now. Now I'm... Everybody that's Super asking bummed. for their money back on this NBC Gold Pass and bitching about a refund and this and that, whatever. Until you know what's going to happen, be quiet Man, about on. that. You it's d- like, dude, you got 10 rounds already, okay, on the, on the pass. Well, it's not only you, that, but the round is outdoor included, right? Yes. So y- just... I, that's what I'm like, dude, really, guys? Really? And you want your money back from fantasy? I've seen those posts. Like, really, guys? It was $20 yeah, we're, or $40, we're, we're all, whatever it was. We're all getting rocked by this. It's, Don't make it that much exactly. more complicated yet. No. If the whole thing gets done, then, yeah, maybe ask for a percentage bag, you know, prorate it, whatever. But t- to say you're gonna, you want to refund completely before we even have a solution to this, like, you're, li- you're jumping the gun, there's... There's some real world problems going on before you start talking about that. All right, next one. Sorry. Victoria M. C. Collie 18 hash it out as their own characters on the Supercross video game. Done streaming on NBC Gold and riders have to play with live mics. That would be absolutely rad. Um, did all the riders, are they all on the game? Is there anyone that, you know how sometimes like a, a guy doesn't want to be on there so he doesn't allow his rights, you know? Or, have you... Played the game to know. Is there anyone of the top guys that aren't on there? I don't think Roxon's on there. Is he not on the game? The new one? I don't think he is. Tomac is, though. <laughs> AC is. <laughs> Cow, of course, Cowie's in. They're monster teams. Um, I love that, Joe. I think that would be... Could you imagine right now just putting them all in video games and letting them live talk it and live stream? Yeah. I think it's hey, a cool idea. Hey, the online streaming gaming services are not affected by this in any way whatsoever. They are, like, in any situation where someone suffers, someone gains. Like, for instance, when all the stocks went haywire, Netflix killed it. Like, Netflix stocks went way up because people are like, well, I'm going to be inside watching. Like, you know what I mean? The gaming world right now is just like, yep, we good. My daughter was so pumped yesterday because they released Frozen 2 on Disney Plus three months early. Oh, because of this? Yeah. Wow. She's all pumped. All right, next one, Joe. Cody, nine seven five Piscatelli. <sighs> What's Cody got? No teams, supporting personnel, or fans. Robot cameras and have an all-out shootout between the top twenty in points at an empty stadium. Seven races in seven days. Oh my god! And the riders have to work on their bikes at night. Each race, the last three riders in points are eliminated to have a <gasps> last race shootout. Between the top two. <laughs> that's kind of cool. That's pretty I, good. I like Cody's idea. I I tolerate Cody you, on who, most days, hey, but this one's pretty good. Who do you think the best mechanic? I, like Stank Dog. Oh. Stank Dog, by far. If these riders had to stop halfway through the race and change their own tires, Stank Dog wins the Supercross title. No question. He's the only one who I believe could probably, other than like Ryan Sipes or Andrew Short, because they're obviously, they, they would come back and win the title. He hit me up the other day, how much for a new toolbox and some tools? Which one? Do my new moto Sipes box. Sipes or Short? No, Stank Dog. Oh, Stank Dog did. Yeah, what's the deal with your moto box? So last time I, when I came on the show, I was kind of teasing a new product. We finally got it done. And uh, look for a product video probably this coming week, but... It's a full blown moto toolbox. It's got Dude, Joe, all the- it's customized to literally what you need and not the excess. Because when you get a toolbox now, it comes with some stupid heavy stuff that just weighs your toolbox down that you don't need. It's the essentials. Everything you need at the track to do just about anything you want. Mm. It's it's bitching. Um, all in foam cutouts. It's pretty cool. So look for that on my Instagram at DCMX Tools on Inst- um probably this next week. Nice. nice. And we'll we'll once it's up, I'll post it on our Instagram too and I'll probably personally give you a little love, too. I like you. Thank you. 
You're right there. I like Joe too. You're, yeah, <laughs> we we, we <laughs> no, know you that. Don't. We know that now. No, you don't. Uh, next one, Joe. T W eight one five double race nights to make up the three canceled. Run them like motocross. Two motos for each class, with each race paying points. Show intro could be highlights from qualifying, but then go right into the live show. Did he say all seven are ran? Or double nights just the last two, because that'd be four. Make up the three canceled, he said. Double yeah, race nights to make seven. up the three. I need all seven. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> My kids depend on all seven. <laughs> Sorry. I, I know I'm a little bit stuck on one thing right there, but it is what it is, man. I, bills are coming. Uh, next one, Joe. Joel Hoffman, 18. Just have a double header in Vegas and Salt Lake, and each night just do some little track changes and don't allow fans, but show on main NBC channel to try and like get that. as many people to watch one night would be an east round, and second night would be a west round. For me, I, again, I don't know how the TV side all... I don't know how that all works as far as programming, but man, if there was any way to run all seven and have them on NBCSN and NBC, like the big channel, again, I'm, I'm, I don't know how content works and how it's decided, but you know how if, great that would be if they all ended up on NBC, you know, the, the, the big network. If they did that, the 250s would have to be both... both would have to be east west shootouts all all four yeah they would have to figure out a way to to equal it all out um how about this too as a scenario if this was to run again two of them four of them seven with no fans in the stadium do we still run the exact time schedule heat races man I mean, again, I don't think it's just so much of where we're going to put them and how we're going to do it. it. The whole thing is going to have to be modified well, in a way, right? They're still going to have to satisfy their TV obligation, right? Well, maybe. Is it? I mean, we do cut downs. I know that. I mean, our our three hour shows have been cut down for NBC Big Channel before. So do we? Do they record live, or do they record and get edited the next day based around the fact that we're sitting around in the stadium for three hours with no fans, no intermission, no. I'm just saying there is so much more that has to be figured out than just where can we do it? How do you do it when there's no fans in the building? How do you... I'd like to see them live on TV. Oh, I would too. I would. I think just it, because when if I miss it on TV, honestly, if I miss it on live TV, the chances of me going back and watching it is 50-50. And if I do, really, well, I watch just the races and that's it. See, I, I just kind of lose interest. I okay. Think. Because you're not in the moment, you're gonna right. you watch different. Joe is different. Joe, you always watch him later, right? You re, do you ever watch live anymore? Uh, I watched one race live this season so Most far. Most of them you record DVR yeah. and then you go back on your time and, yep. and watch it. Yeah. So I think everyone's affected differently. So I can fast forward by the commercials, the track reporting, all that bullshit. Just get straight really? to the races. Really? <laughs> Pre race reports too. Fast forward those. Everything. You're gonna do wheel like that, huh? Uh Really? Yeah. Because I know you don't skip my stuff. <laughs> Better not. Next one. Marco Pirello just pushed back the series. Everything moves back. Motocross, Monster Cup, and MX Donations. See, that was, that was RH22's plan, too. Again, logistically, I think it's impossible because the locations dry up. The availability dries up. See, right now, everything's available. That's what I'm saying. If you can get on the front end of this thing and be ready to strike when things hopefully turn for the better from a world perspective be ready to boom 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 and knock it out and that way we don't lose the outdoor schedule that way we don't lose the rest of the year like i, I i'm for trying to figure a way to rush it and close instead of trying a way to make up another other time there's too many logistical problems with that next one Jared Murky reset the points for top 10 and test the chase format. No matter who oh, wins, they will always have an asterisk next to their name, regardless God. of the outcome of this championship. Read that one again, Joe. Read sorry. that again. Sorry, I was getting too excited. Say it again. He says, reset the points for top 10 and test the chase format. No matter who wins, they will always have an asterisk next to their name, regardless of the outcome of this championship. I'm out. Run all 17. Toback needs to win this title. On you don't believe rounds. he can close it down in a, in a shootout? I don't want no asterisks. There's an asterisk no matter what, dude. No, no matter what, no matter what, this will always be the season that we look back at and go, "Well, 
Regardless, and that's if Kenny Joe, wins. It's true. Joe Eli is shaking wins. his head. I'm starting to kind of dislike you, Joe. <laughs> Listen, no matter, no you matter, already did, no bro. matter what, no matter what, if they, if this thing's over at ten, if they squeeze in two more, or if they squeeze in seven more, this will always be the year. Yeah, remember that year though, because this is we, we've already ruined our traditional championship format. It's already ruined. So no matter what, it's the asterisk. I, again, if I'm a rider, I don't care about the asterisk for pride. I care about the asterisk for financial and bonuses and whatever race wins and titles. You know what I mean? Like, do you would you care, Joe? If yeah, you would care on a personal standpoint if this was the year you got it and it was done in a weird way. Yep, me too. Oh, man, again, I'm. I, I guess it's just because I've lived my whole life in survival mode. I just I only care about whatever it is. I don't care about. Anything that it has anything to do with pride or the way it got done, as long as it was done in a way that I met my financial obligations, my family. That's literally all that would matter to me. Is I, I don't give me the asterisk. I mean, I get an asterisk right now for my arena cross title. Probably shouldn't be over thirty years old racing the lights class in a regional arena cross title. Give me and Dave Janolfi an asterisk. I don't care at all. If anything, the asterisk makes it funny. Sorry <laughs> to all the dads out there that ruin their kids' dreams. Um, next one. Preston Rose 513. Should be simple. If they run Vegas and Salt Lake, do double headers. Pick a place like the old Chargers Stadium or one close to SoCal. Do another double header. See, the California market to me is the hardest one because they're already at that 250 mark person, which again, I, from what I understand, I don't think a Supercross can operate under 250. I was going to ask you, how many people like TV crew I don't know the total numbers. Um, I just know from the conversations that I did had when you add up everything from stadium workers that would have to be there to run, be there to run the place, the teams, the riders, spect- whatever. From what I understand, it's more than two fifty, hmm. and they can't get under that no matter what. So again, for if, if they're looking for another location to throw in outside of the two that are remaining, I think the California market is off. You would have to go. Hey, there's a lot. Maybe of- Arizona or. There's a lot of people fighting for Boise. If there was a place in Boise, Idaho. Idaho, I looked on some map the other day, and they have like, do they have like no cases of this yet? I don't believe so. I saw a map, it might have been three days ago, so it's probably changed, but it showed every state, and it was colored, Joe, where they color each one based on the amount, and I'm pretty sure Boise had nothing. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, Idaho. Let's run up there, man. Fly Racing Headquarters, right, right there next to their, right in their backyard. They got a track behind the building. <laughs> Run it there. Their series sponsor. Done. Solved. Next one. Jimmy Neutron 987, Rocks and Tomac Web cage fight. Who you got? <laughs> that'll in settle a, the. In a cage fight. <laughs> that'll settle the championship. Uh, Roxon's German, so I feel like he's got, you know, some old school, like, uh, just military. You know, they're just known for being a tough military. He's got it somewhere in the. He's like a the, technical fighter. Web's, like, Webb's got the cage fight on lock. Why is that? He's just because he's no quit. He's just the. He's like one of those UFC fighters that's literally like because the other two are pussies. That's why. <laughs> no, Web, Web, Web reminds me of like uh, he'd be a UFC fighter where he's just bleeding and battered, and they're gonna call it because the guy he can't even stand up, and then he just somehow in the last round haymakers and wins. You know what I mean? You've seen those UFC yeah. fights where oh, a guy yeah. like he's done and then he wins. It's like every Rocky or no 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 uh, Apollo the second Apollo Creed yeah. movie, he's like dead. And then he like wins, which is ridiculous. Um, Tomac wrestles bears during the week, so I, I could see him pretty be good. That'd be, a, that'd be a good fight, actually. <laughs> the honest truth is probably none of these guys have a clue how to fight, and Justin Hill would probably whoop all their asses. That's what would happen. Justin Hill wins the title in a cage fight. Next one. Stamp it. Basic white father. This is Daniel. This is going to be Daniel's guarantee gift card right here. Basic that's white. His na- that's his name. That is his name. Basic white father. He says, tell the government to F off and hold the races. Well, I'll be needing his email address for the gift card <laughs> my question. I'm with him. Gift card winner so far. I, for me. Okay, here's an honest question about this. Again, I think we're in the unknowns, but they say in the average age of people that don't make it through the coronavirus is over 80. What's the average age of the regular flu? Because we run max capacity during winter months when the regular flu is taking out huge amounts of our population. So we, says, we run that no problem. Says the flu kills less than 1% of infected people who are 
over the age of 65. By comparison, in China, the coronavirus... I, I want to know what the average age is for the regular flu every year that don't make it. That's why I want to know. Find that number for me. And I don't care about this whole, oh, 0.021%, and this one's 10 times wor-. There's not enough data to throw those numbers out. You, you don't even know what you're talking about if you're throwing that number out. Oh, we're at a 3% death... We don't even barely know what it is. You don't throw numbers like that as certainty. It's those, that number is going to change dramatically every week. The regular flu, you have salt. You have decades of numbers. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's why I'm saying is they're like, well, this thing is claiming three percent of everyone who gets it. Well, that's not fair. You don't even know who has it right now. The number of cases could be ten times that, and the mortality rate could be way lower. It's you know what I mean? They're they're so quick to jump to numbers that they have no idea what they're talking about so fast. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not finding any like solid numbers. And in fact, how many cases are there in the U S right now? They love to talk about the number of cases of people that have not made it through, but they sure don't want to tell you who they are and how old they are and where it came from and where their location is. They don't, you never notice that that information never comes out. Like, what's the real story behind this thing? That's the, that's my biggest problem is they are so quick to shut the world down, but they won't even reveal who the hell is really being affected by it. Good job, basic white father. You got DB on the yeah, on the train. I'm fired up night now. Now I now have to stick around and do a main main show episode. CMC Net 105. DB created the Rona, so he didn't have to get beat by Danger Boy Deegan. It's the opposite. This gives me more time to prepare. I, I really, I saw a lack of preparation time in my schedule. So this is good for me. I'm, I'm tra- in fact, Joe, Law Tigers weekly update. Let's do it. Motoheads, we ride with Law Tigers. The lawyers who ride. Visit lawtigers.com or call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS for more information. The Law Tigers watch over their own. And with Law Tigers, you'll never ride alone. And now, our weekly Law Tigers update. So, Joe, the last two days, I've gone off the deep end. I'm not going to lie. I have been consuming a lot of food. You would think in times like this, we would tighten up our eating. I I, I haven't stopped eating the last two days. That's literally all I've been doing is sitting on the couch eating. And What have you been re- eating? Oh, man. Bagel bites. Um, I, I mean, I, I told you I went to Walmart twice on Thursday, once before I left for the airport and once when I came back. We're, we're locked and loaded. I mean, I don't want to re- give my address out in case things go dire. Cause people <laughs> will be. I, we have enough food to last problem is though is when there's that much good stuff in the house it's hard to stop man start grazing dude been grazing non-stop but before that i had gone two weeks where i literally had i I probably lost six or seven pounds i think when last time you eat chick-fil-a i I haven't had it in a couple weeks like seriously no and i've been working out i got me and evan got little dumbbell uh dumbbells in the house he's got his little tiny one i got my a little bit bigger than a little tiny one. <laughs> and we've been just lifting weights, doing push-ups, sit-ups, getting in shape. I'm even going to start jogging. Uh, Jacob's back at my house for a couple weeks, so I have his bike. So I can start practicing on the bike that'll be similar to my what I'm going to race on. So, no, for the Law Tigers weekly update, we're good. I, I'm focused. I just had a two-day binger. Uh, and that's <laughs> I'm good now, though. I'm getting back together, and I will be ready. And again, I have more time to prepare now. So I will be even faster. Whatever odds Danger Boy had, they're gone. What's he going to get magically better in the next month and a half? I have 10 times more time to prepare. It, this is all bad for him, all good for me. Hey, so we got a, a gym membership like last month, and I hadn't used it yet. So last week, I was like, Sabrina's so like, we need to go. He gets it last month, and he hasn't used it yeah, yet. Yeah, just been too busy. Mm-hmm. So we went last week, right? Wednesday. Dude, like 15 minutes on the elliptical and like a half hour on the treadmill. I don't know how you guys do it. I was don't, so don't look at me. bored. Oh, boredom is oh, the worst. I was watching uh, Daytona replay on my phone, just trying to stay like, you know, not bored. Dude, I think I'm done. Dude, I'm out. Here's the funniest thing. Jacob Hayes on his recovery day. This is his off day. He does an hour and a half bike ride in my garage on his little spin bike that's connected to that little thing so he could just spin in the garage. He just sits there and watches YouTube videos of old races for an hour and a half in the garage looking at a wall. On every recovery. That's that's recovery day. It's psychotic. I, I, I literally can't go five minutes without doing something. Yeah. Hour and a half just spinning. Oh my God. 
Um, anyways, that's the update, uh, update, Joe. I'm good. I'm. This little bet has gotten better for me, as long as it runs, and we'll be good. All right, next one. Cord e ill, cord e ill. Okay. Hawaiian Supercross seven weekends in a row. I'm in on that too. I've seen that going around a bunch of people saying, "Let's just go to Hawaii." I don't think they got cases out there yet. It's just run seven in Hawaii. I'm all in. Do you I imagine? Don't... Yeah, that'd be good. Dan would be like, dude, get me on the staff somehow. Yeah, I'm in. Get me a job quick. Do it for free. Would you clean Tough Box for free for seven rounds? Yeah, Hawaii? dude. Joe, would you? You want to go? Hell yeah. Should we gift card this guy? Is it better? Cordial is this is a pretty good idea. Seven races in Hawaii? Yeah. It doesn't get better. Give him the gift card. Ooh, right. already? Well, well, we'll see. Right, let's. Well, how many more we got? Three more. All right. Cordial, you're looking good. Uh, took Ling Y. Just give the title to Tomac. When he fails to win another 450 title, we can argue for the rest of our lives if it counts or not. Nope. We're not, we're not just going to give him this thing. We, it's the, team only, Green, it's, the only, it's the only way he gets it, Dan. Team Green, we don't take things like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way he gets it, Dan. Huh, Joe? Uh, uh, maybe. Next one. Kelson Ammons, with literally every sporting event on earth being canceled, ESPN and people stranded at home are literally begging for entertainment, something to cover. If Supercross races without fans, we could have the most watched race in the history of the sport. 100%. If this can somehow be put together over the next month and this happens and they can get it on live TV, it will be the most watched seven round run. In history. Dude, I would be Garrett, so d- pumped. Double, double the amount of normal. Everybody that's kind of lost interest will be f- fully back. Like, it'll be the greatest numbers they've had Dude, in a long you, time. Well, you probably don't, Daniel. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. On for, Like, during the week, I get so excited for Saturday. For Saturday night, you know, to, to watch the race and watch Race Day Live. Like, Saturdays, I look forward to it. So what if you had it every on couple days? Wh- like, on Wednesday? Like, you know, Could you Monday imagine night, right now, like, Wednesday? Oh, dude, Wednesday night Supercross? Dude, that would be rad. It would be rad. It would be rad. And again, it's just think le- about it. It's logistically be... impossible in an under traditional situation. But in this situation... Let's make the best of it. Dude, run them Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Don't even do the weekends. Monday, Wednesday, Friday for a couple weeks. Let's go, man. Come on. Come on, random team and rider that I know is pushing back on this. Stop. Let's do this thing. All right, let's go. Last one. Steel underscore 830. I'm just pissed I can't walk behind the Race Day Live set and stand behind Daniel Blair holding my, I think, produ- producer Joe Gallo as my dad's sign. It was going to be so awesome. That would have been awesome. That would have been Save awesome. Save it for 2021. I think producer Joe is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Come on, Steel 830. You know. You know I am. <laughs> Uh, good show, I guess. I don't know, man. I, I, I what are we going to do next week, Joe? What do you want to do for content? Well, that is, that we'll is a, that's a real discussion. I mean, I don't want to talk about this virus ever again. I, 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 next week's show, I would love to give a five minute update on wherever we are in the world, and then move on to something racing. But what do we? What do we talk? What do we do? We could talk about that Daytona 250 class, man. That was amazing. You love that? We've been, yeah. We never, that well, we never got there. to talk about it because again, I'd do the show solo. But. Yeah. You know what's crazy is before the before the heat races from Daytona, I was like, man, I and I I verbally said this. I said I think March Banks is going to do it tonight. And then when he won the heat race, Ooh. I was like, holy smokes! <laughs> and then when he was uh, leading the main, I'm like, oh my god! He's like, well, Dan, <laughs> this is crazy. for the future. If it's going to be like that, whatever you're thinking, start putting it out there a little bit publicly. Because then you get to, you get to say that you see right now. I don't even believe you thought that. I I, 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 I swear, get, Joe. I, I believe. I don't it. get. He don't, think, he don't get credit for that. I'm trying to get on Dan's good side. I thought Eli was going <laughs> to pass Roxon when he tipped over on that off camber. That's what I. That's what I thought. Shit. Look at Dan, he just bet pissed. because everything that he predicts is wrong. <laughs> Pretty much, almost everything. All right, good show, guys. Um, I have an idea for next week, though. I, I have an idea, Joe. I have an idea for at least next week. I, I, we go week by week, right? We got to go week by week. Who, uh, yeah. Uh, who's getting the gift card, bro? Oh, 
uh, Hawaii, Hawaii guy. You want to go with Hawaii who, guy? Who Who was the next one before that? The ba- one that, that had was basic white father. Yeah, saying f the government. Oh, <laughs> I included him in that. I mean, I agree with him, <laughs> obviously, thousand percent. But I didn't know if I was going to give him a card for that. He was, it was two on the nose. What was Cody's? Cody said uh, seven races in seven days. <sighs> not, I'm not giving Cody the gift card. Cody, hit me up on Instagram. I'm going to give you a fifty dollars snap. That a boy. Card. I like that. But no, let's give the Hawaiian Supercross guy. All right, um, Cordy the gift it. Card. Yeah, good job, bro, Cordy. Cordy it. Cordy it. Huge shout out to Fly Racing, Mika Metals, No Toil. EMT Racing, Viral Moto, All Me Creations, Motorsport.com, All American Chevy of Colleen, Screen Printing Done, Guts Racing, Scott USA, DRS Suspension with Race Tech, and um, of course, Law Tigers. Thank you guys so much. And yeah, next week, let's try to find a way to talk moto. I have an idea. I think we could do something pretty cool to get through these. Uh, Lodi Supercross these round times. two. Yeah, round two. Based on the weather, Joe, I think in Thursday night, might have the Lodi Supercross round number two. Ooh. Um, all TV the big crew. players all coming the, out. The TV crew will be there. We'll all be there. By the way, this gift card's dude's name is Cord Ill. It's C O R D E I L L. All right. DM me, bro, and um, we'll get you taken care of. But thanks, guys. And um, I guess next week we'll figure something out. Stay safe out there. Stay, good luck. We'll Stay see safe. you on the hey, other side. If everything works out okay, we'll see you in the back end of this. If not, it's nice knowing you. Main event mode. Ah, screw it. You know it by now.